I work in the in an area of mathematics called combinatorics, uh, and I'm here at LSE because of the strength of the mathematics department in particular. Uh, working with Professor Graham Brightwell in, uh, I work in combinatorics of partially ordered sets in particular. So the Mathematics Genealogy Project is a database of nearly 150,000 mathematicians from around the globe going back into the 14th century now where unlike a traditional genealogy your supervisor is your parent, your father so to speak and then his supervisor is your grandmother say and so on and so you can trace yourself back and find out who your great 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 grandfather is by going back several generations worth of supervisors and then if you have PhD students they become your children and their students become your grandchildren and so on so we have this massive collection of mathematicians over 50,000 of our nearly 150,000 people could uh, trace themselves back either to Leonard Euler, a famous Swiss mathematician of the 18th century, or, uh, or Carl Gauss, a uh, German mathematician of roughly the same era. People educated in Britain can usually trace themselves back to J.H. Hardy or um, Arthur Cayley, um, going back considerably further uh, than Hardy. Uh, so yeah, at least a third of people have someone really obviously famous and a lot of the people who can't get to those can get to someone who's pretty prominent. Could we ever get back to the ancient Greeks and connect everything? Probably not without making some really big leaps in uh, what it means to be an influence or a mentor. We have this, this problem with the Dark Ages and trying to get over them because we do, we try to follow PhD supervisors or sort of primary influences when you have someone, and this happens even in the modern era, who didn't have a PhD. And you look in Britain, it's a, even more complicated because of the late adoption of the PhD. Um, but right now we're back into the 1300s and at that point it's hard to identify anyone as being a mathematician in the way we would identify today. They were, they were scientists, they were philosophers, they were astronomers, they were physicists, they, theologians in many cases as well, and doing mathematics as part of what they did and introducing things that have become so fundamental to what we do today. Uh, one area that we didn't know was going to happen when the genealogy project was developed is uh, how editors and uh, program directors use it when they're reviewing manuscripts and uh, grant proposals. Uh, most funding agencies and editorial boards now have conflict of interest rules saying that a student can't review a grant proposal of their PhD supervisor or they can't review uh, an article submission that was written by their PhD supervisor and so our database being out there and open for everyone in the world to access provides a ready resource. Uh, there, we know of at least one publisher who's built our database into their workflow for how they assign papers for review. It basically blocks papers from being assigned to anyone who's one generation related uh, in our genealogy project database and so it's very interesting to see how many people use it for these sorts of very important purposes that were never imagined when Harry conceived of the project and put it online at the f in the first place. Uh, I get a lot of inquiries from people in other disciplines saying, oh I'd like to get something started in history or chemistry or physics or biology, you know, geneticists have actually contacted us. We'd like to have one. Uh, mathematicians probably are a bit more interested in history of our discipline than some other people and you can trace it back a lot farther than perhaps you could in chemistry say where you still see mathematical influences coming out of the the 1400s things that are important there's not a lot of important chemistry that was done in the 1400s that's still relevant today there is some combinatorics that underlies the structure of it for example if we want to count how many descendants some famous mathematician you know, Carl Gauss might have. Um, there's a difficulty of trying to navigate down without make sure you don't double count anyone. And so, you know, this is a combinatorial structure if we look at the, the mathematicians as points and the relationships between them. But um, it's not really any sort of deep mathematics that underlies it. But people are interested in what does this look like as a as a structure, as a network of human beings over uh, several centuries. I hope they don't take it too seriously, especially 
going back many generations. And I hope people think it's fun to see that famous mathematician, but not to take it too seriously and say, oh, I'm great because I'm descended from Euler. And, uh, so are a third of all the other people in, in the database.